Hi everyone, Rob Hoyer from Two Docs Talk. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about sleep. I've been tracking my sleep data for a couple of years with the, an Aura Ring. Recently had a sleep study, a home sleep study, and compared that data and it was pretty surprising. To get access to all our videos, the latest health updates and ways to improve your health span, hit the subscribe button below. So as I mentioned in the intro, I've been using an Aura Ring for the last few years. And this is a, this is a device, it's a, it's a sleep tracker. So it's a little device that it's literally quite literally a, a ring and it has uh, um, sensors inside and, it, and, it, and these sensors look at uh, body movement, uh, temperature, oxygen saturation, uh, heart rate, and something called heart rate variability, which is a time between heartbeats. There's other sensors as well and uh, generates all this data that you can then look at on an app. So I've been using this for the last few years and I thought I was doing pretty well. I'm pretty happy with my sleep quality. It's always usually get a score of what's called good on Aura, and I thought I was doing okay. I had an episode a couple uh, a couple months ago uh, on election night actually, where I uh, was sleepwalking, got out of bed, was dreaming, ended up trying to tackle this table next to my uh, this nightstand next to my bed, and cut my my chin. Uh, had to go to the ER. Uh, blood all over the place, had to get stitches. I was um, pretty su surprised this, with this, this whole, in shock actually about this whole event. Uh, my wife has recently mentioned that I've, I was snoring at night, which was new. Thought, well, maybe I should, you know, see a sleep specialist and get, get this checked out. So I ended up seeing a sleep specialist, was advised to wear a home sleep apnea uh, a d test device and did that and got a result back of uh, moderate obstructive sleep apnea. I don't have any uh, risk factors for sleep apnea other than um, being a male. My uh, body weight is uh, normal, body mass index is normal, but was uh, pretty surprised when I got that result. So I thought it might be interesting to look at the aura data, compare that to the home sleep study. I think it's important to say a big disclaimer, this is not really a totally fair comparison. Aura is not a medical device. It's, it's designed to look at sleep quality and help you improve that sleep quality. It's not designed to measure or diagnose sleep apnea. Not a totally fair comparison in that regard. However, I thought it'd be interesting to just compare the two and we can also go through the reports and uh, learn about um, how to how to read a, uh, a sleep report as well. First, let's let's go into the Aura data. So this is my data from, from Aura. And so this is last night's uh, data. So uh, it, uh, it calculates what's called the readiness score uh, from uh, zero to 100 and then the sleep score. So I did better on readiness than on sleep and we'll you can click on each one. And for sleep, it breaks down all the different uh, uh, categories here, heart rate, heart rate variability, body temperature, respiratory rate, and it calculates this score. And you can look at each of these different metrics as well. I usually get scores of uh, sleep between um, in the you know 70s to 80s. So this is the, the sleep scores here. Uh, take a look at this. This is, uh, I think, kind of interesting. Time in bed and total sleep. So uh, for me, it's about 45 minutes to an hour where I'm in bed, um, but my actual sleep time is less than that, about an, by about by about an hour. And so that's something that I've I've been looking at and uh, noting on, on this data. And you, we'll, as we go through it, we'll see that that's pretty consistent. Um, looks at resting heart rate, um, and it shows you the the, the um, the sleep uh, sleep duration and the sleep stages as well. So it looks at awake, REM sleep, light sleep, and then deep sleep. This is the oxygen saturation, and it looks at the, the percentage of oxygen saturation and breathing regularity. And usually, my data was pretty you know pretty good. Here, the that's uh, two nights ago, time in bed and total sleep about an hour. Different um, on the day before that, again about an hour different. My breathing regularity usually is pretty good, optimal or good on almost all the all the days. So I thought I was doing okay in this regard and uh, then did the, the sleep um, study um, that I got back. I was in my car when I read this and was pretty surprised. I was uh, not, not totally prepared to, to read this. So moderate sleep apnea, sleep fragmentation, uh, the apnea hypopnea index of 21 with an oxygen saturation, the lowest level was 79%. So 
That was the conclusion of the report. This is the actual report, and it looks at the, uh, the, the total recording time up here on top, seven hours, 30 minutes. The total amount of sleep was six hours and 32 minutes. So again, about an hour difference between the two. So for me, that seems to be my norm. And it looks like, it looks at these different, um, these different metrics, what's called the apnea hypopnea index. So this is the, the big one you want to look at here. It looks at the apneas, which is when I stop breathing, hypopneas, breathe lightly, and then um, add those together and divide by the total time of sleep. So it came up, that comes gives a, a, a value of 21. And if you look at here on the bottom, it looks at the, this shows the, the scale of uh, sleep apnea severity. Uh, normal is less than five, mild five to 15, moderate 15 to 30, and then above 30 is considered severe. So I was in the, we're kind of smack dab in the middle of the moderate range. But also there's another metric here called the respiratory um, uh, distress index, and that came up at 240. That shows the apneas, hypopneas, and also these sleep arousals. And so if you add those together, it was, it was 240 events, um, which gives a, an, a value of 37.9. Uh, anything above 30 actually is, is considered severe. Sleep, actually not, not great, you know, based on this, uh, on, this, uh, on this result. Over here shows the oxygen uh, saturation. Most of my oxygen saturation drops are pretty mild, so only, you know, between 4 and 9% drop. So this is probably why Aura was showing that my oxygen level was fairly good, it, but um, you know, an average. But it, again, I'm having these these drops. If you look at the actual data for the sleep uh, test, we'll go into this. The actual this is the, the tracing. You can see the the respiratory events on top, body position, and then the oxygen saturation. And when this little black line here drops uh, below 90, that's when you're you know get concerned and so periodically having these these drops when, when I have those drops the my heart rate usually goes up around the the time of those drops indicating that there's an arousal so I'm waking up a little bit during that time so I got this data back met with my uh, sleep uh, specialist and uh, decided to to uh, do uh, CPAP so I haven't started it yet but I'll start it in the coming weeks I'm going to try a nasal device first a nasal CPAP device give that a go um, so in summary, um, you know, if you're having any sleep issues or if your uh, partner says you're, you are snoring or you're stopping breathing when you sleep, um, or you're, you're having unusual fatigue during the day, but you're, you know, you think you're sleeping okay. Um, and even if your watcher or a ring says you're doing okay, maybe consider, consider a sleep study, consider meeting with a sleep specialist and having that, having this evaluated. I was uh, glad I did because I, I, I think what happened when I was sleepwalking, my, my theory is that it probably had one of these events, oxygen level went down, I kind of woke up, but only partially, I don't really remember it. And I think what happened is I ended up um, you know, having this event, I was disoriented and then fell, fell out of bed and um, hit, hit the table. So um, that's it for today. I, would love to hear your comments. And if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me at rob at two docs talk podcast.com. You can also put comments in the, in the, uh, in the uh, video on the video below, hit the, hit that subscribe button so you can get the latest updates and uh, we'll see you on the next, uh, next video.